All right. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Meredith Dixon. I'm an educational program coordinator with the KUHOI. Um, I'm excited to see so many folks on the call today. Just a couple quick notes before I pass it over to our presenters. Uh, we are recording this session today, and so um, it will be available on our YouTube channel um, by the end of this week for you to review afterwards. Um, the chat function is also active today, so you are welcome to throw questions in there, um, introduce yourself if that's what you want to do, um, and we'll we'll be able to look at those throughout the session. Um, and then also just a reminder that at the end of this session, we will share a link uh, for an, an evaluation, um, and we'll share that out via email also um, for attendees so that you can tell us how we're doing. And also for those that are seeking um, continuing ed credit, um, that will be an important part of that that process so that we know that you're here and that you want to receive credit for attending today. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to my colleague, James. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is James Bauman. I'm the Publications Director for AKUAI, and I have been um, serving as one of the staff liaisons uh, working on the Future of the uh, Profession project with uh, the fine people that are um, going to be hearing from later on today, but just wanted to give a, a quick note. Um, uh, hopefully, most of you are familiar with the Future of the Profession initiative thus far. Um, the short version of it is that um, a group of volunteers like yourself got together and identified eight key uh, areas uh, that the campus housing profession questions that they will need to answer as we move forward uh, into the future. And one of them was the question of how do we better communicate the value of on-campus housing? Um, I think that um, we're all in agreement that we do good work. Um, and I think we're also all in agreement that uh, not everybody knows about the good work that we do. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna have this uh, presentation today and we're gonna learn a little bit more about how uh, everybody on your staff um, can take on that role of ambassador and help spread the good word. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to our team. Great, thank you so much everyone for being part of the session today. My name is Sean Killian. I'm the Senior Director for Housing Administration at Temple University. Uh, we are a Research One institution in uh, urban campus in Philadelphia. Uh, we have 30,000 students and we have about a uh, little over 5,000 on-campus residents in our on-campus housing inventory, and then about 7,000 that live in the local uh, surrounding what we would consider off-campus areas. So that pretty much makes up our uh, campus, on-campus community. And I'm going to pass it on to Allie. Sure. Um Good morning or afternoon, everyone. Allie Santander, I use she, her pronouns. I am the Associate Director of Marketing and Communications for Housing and Residential Life. And we are located at the University of Arizona in Tucson, um, not Phoenix, just to clarify. Um, we are a Research One institution as well. And we have about 53,000 enrolled students as of um, last fall census date with about 8,000 of those students residing with us on campus. So a, a pretty sizable institution with, with 23 different dorms. Great, thanks, Allie. And our third presenter, Mallory uh, Sedaris, is the Director of University Housing at uh, Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville. Um, she'll be joining us in a few minutes. There are uh, some time zone issues that we were having and um, she had asked for a couple minutes to, to jump on. Um, so she'll be joining us soon, but they're also a, um, a mid-size a regional public institution about 30 minutes from St. Louis. Um, they have uh, 13,000 students um, with approximately 2,900 on-campus residents. Um, so the three of us have really had a great opportunity to work together over the past few months in working with James on this um, initiative with the future of the profession and really looking at the of, you know, the, the discussion of communicating the value of uh, on-campus housing. So, um, you know, what we do professionally, this has really been an area that we've, um, all three of us have really enjoyed. So, um, but to start, so why communicate the value of on-campus housing? So since the turn of the century, we've seen a, tr a 
a transformation occur in higher education that has forced us to consider how we operate. We are more and more being asked to run or organizations like a business, factoring in many business practices that are often new and unfamiliar with us in the educational field. Uh, so as the campus housing and residential life profession uh, comes out of the, the turbulent two years um, you know, with COVID that you know, we had seen um, you know, in both you know, higher education and society at large, uh, the issues identified in the future of the profession report, as James referenced early, earlier, will have a lasting impact on our field. So th there are definitely, you know, great content in that report. And, you know, our focus today is on the how we're communicating the value of campus housing, but there are also other areas that are critically important for us to think about. Uh, broadly speaking, though, these issues fall into two categories. Uh, with regards to the communicating the value of campus housing and those that are tied to how we approach our work and impact our departments, staffs, and students daily, which we would reference as internal, and those that are a result of external forces that will impact our campuses more broadly, and as a result, the work that we perform to support the academic mission of our respective colleges and universities or the external. So again, our presentation today will focus on the one of the eight imperatives that we've identified communicating the value of campus housing. So next, I think this is, we're gonna do a poll of who is in the virtual room with us. So if you don't mind taking the survey here, And I guess Mallory, you're on if, uh, yep, there you go. Yes, I'm here. I apologize for my tardiness. Yeah, and as we would, James mentioned as well, we would love for you to share a little bit more in the chat too about maybe what your role is at your institution. Um, we are kind of all over the board, which is kind of what we thought. And so um, we also acknowledge that you're probably here because you recognize that it is some part of your job, even if it is not in your job description. So we'd love for us to be able to utilize the chat since there's three of us, we can other that we can also engage while the other one is speaking. So we'd love for folks to um, to be able to be in community that way and talk a little bit more about maybe why you're here and, and what this was of interest to you. And we'll use the chat for that as well. So thanks, Sean. Great. So for uh, for today's students and families, it's about delivering value and an experience that is transformational as well as transactional. Students want to learn, but they also want a transformational experience. They want work experience. They want to study abroad. They want opportunities to join clubs and organizations, and they want to be entertained with activities, athletics, and a culture that supports their needs. So looking at servicing the needs of our students is important in this process. And it brings us to the idea of hopefully something you, you're familiar with and you've heard of, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So when we consider Maslow's needs, it, again, it's always a good reference to understand what we're trying to do when we talk about communicating about our value proposition and how this connects to addressing the needs and the wants of our students. A, p a few points from a basic marketing 101 course, uh, much of our work resides in addressing what, what I would often refer to as the physiological or the basic needs of our students, but we are increasingly seeing needs such as safety or a sense of belonging creeping into our work. So that kind of goes up higher on that Maslow's uh, chart and hierarchy when we're looking at how we're servicing the needs of our constituents. We know students can't reach their fullest or highest potential without achieving those basic needs first, which is really what leads us to this idea of, you know, thinking about, you know, Maslow's needs and, and you know, the, how people interact with our staffs and our departments. 
it's an idea about exchange, the, uh, the this concept of an exchange relationship and how important this is um, when factoring in uh, how companies have approached marketing and branding in their organizations, especially during the 90s when companies uh, saw um, the traditional forms of communication change to become a little bit more sophisticated with regards to the idea of building relationships and really transforming how they engage with their with their customers. So that's really what we're seeing uh, nowadays. So, you know, so as we move on from the basics of, of understanding it, and trust me, we could go on for hours um, covering kind of the basics, uh, we thought it would be important for us to, you know, really step back and have an understanding of, you know, if you have thought about your value proposition and how your organizations engage in that conversation with um, your teams to develop a message that uh, resonates with your with your customers, your students, and their families. Um, so we kind of wanted to provide some time in this space for you to consider your own unique selling proposition and what makes, and, and having that kind of thought process in your mind about what makes living on your campus a great option for your students. So in many cases, cost, convenience, safety, your accommodations, in some cases it may be a requirement for your students to live on campus, but all of this is kind of what adds value to your students' experience. So if we could spend a few minutes, um, think about your key points of differentiation, what makes your housing options unique and different from your, your competitors? And when you're done, if you wanna share this in the chat, that would be great. So thank you, Kristen, you have here when you live on campus at Western Kentucky University. Oh, it went away on me. Go right back up. You have the unique opportunity to live in a community with hilltoppers from down the road and across the globe. Our living options will enable you to learn about yourself and others experiencing meaningful connections and realize your peak potential. This is great. And I, and I love which is, you know, not surprising at all to when you we engage with people with a communications background using, you know, the, the words that kind of trigger a connection with your institution. So things like, you know, your peak potential and how that can connect to your brand is, is you know, is great to see stuff like that. So, um, so great. So hopefully um, you'll continue to see ideas um, of people sharing you know, how they're defining their value proposition. And, you know, it's a good exercise to go through initially um, because I think that is um, important in this process. So um, so now that we've kind of taken that or defined that as being an important first step, um, you know, again, just circling back on, you know, the, the thought process and, and how you differentiate from your competition. And traditionally we have, uh, you know, some things that might have, been considered in the past, you'll see here on this slide, um, things like, you know, people who live in a university uh, residence hall, uh, students have a higher GPA when they live on campus, they engage in less risky behavior. Uh, we tend to see uh, students retained at higher percentages when they live on campus and matriculate to graduate at a higher rate. So these are all things and, and benefits that we would often communicate as the reason that living on campus is better for students. Um, but again, in today's world, we really need to challenge um, ourselves to dig deeper in that. And that's really, you know, what we're seeing with this um, conversation that um, we're, you know, we just need to engage in more uh, detail as it relates to that. So, So defining your value proposition will be, again, a critical first step to moving forward with any major marketing or promotional campaign for your department. You should have a clear vision for what you're looking to promote 
and ensure that you understand what sets your department in operation apart from others. Two resources that I hope will aid in your efforts to build and develop your strategy are references to a popular book and a documentary about the persuasion business. So the first uh, book, uh, Starting With Why, is a book by Simon Sinek and helps readers process the importance of focusing on the why within your organization. It's about finding your purpose and focusing on what makes you and your organization special. There's a great TED Talk that's available, easily accessible, um, that explains uh, this concept and is dedicated to the idea that uh, it might be a great exercise for um, your staff, maybe at your next staff meeting, or if you're having a creative process to dig in to, to define what your value proposition is, this might be a great video um, for you for you all to watch because um, it really, again, kind of talks to the idea of how you discover and uh, articulate the why of your organization. So um, the next resource is a PBS special titled The Persuaders, which is a film documenting how businesses and organizations use persuasion tactics to get people to buy things. Uh, during the documentary, within the first 15 minutes, there's a clip from an author of a book called No Logo, and the author's name is Naomi Klein, and she discusses the idea referenced that we referenced earlier about emotional branding that emerged in the 90s and, and provides examples of how companies use these efforts to build their brands and enhance their relationship with the customers which is very different and that kind of emerged in the 90s. So companies like Starbucks, um, The Body Shop, and um, uh, you know other organizations that focused on the meaning behind their organizations and how they transformed um, what they and how they were selling to customers. So um, this is really something that uh, we're seeing in our field now where people are you know, asking us to dig deeper and really kind of ask, you know, the the why questions, like why is it important for us to be part of one organization versus the other organization? So again, we're seeing more and more of that within the business world and it, with, with higher education becoming more competitive, this is a strategy that is gaining more prevalence in our field. So um, again, two great resources for you to think about. Um, as you're looking to define your value proposition. And again, it focuses on the why and what makes us different compared to other people within our, uh, within our profession. So I hope these resources are helpful as you begin this process. So I'm gonna pass it on to Allie now, who's gonna talk about identifying the value of data. Thank you, Sean. So at the University of Arizona, uh, we are fortunate enough to have an in-house staff, um, a couple staff that focus solely on assessment um, and really engaging with our current residents and past residents and prospective residents even uh, to learn kind of what they're looking for in their, their on-campus housing experience. And um, that also pertains to students that are, are ready to move on and you know live off campus. Um, and we're really able to tap into them as a resource to help inform um, what we do, why we do it, and, and going back to what Sean was saying, our why. Um, if, if you don't have this type of um, you know, assessment team on, on your end of things, um, I, I encourage you to reach out to other campus partners because this information is there. It's just about asking the right, right folks and building those connections. Um, admissions, for example, is a really great place to start. They are always talking to students um, day in, day out. They're talking to the families. Um, so they can really help give you a big picture of, of what your, your why might be or what your students are, and families are looking for and, and what their why is and why they're, what they're looking for and, and what they're looking for that value proposition to be. Uh, next slide. So um, again, we have used, oh, I think we're going the wrong way. 
we'll get there. Uh, but at University of Arizona, we have used um, some different uh, assessment data, as I mentioned, to help us define and kind of showcase our own value propositions um, in ways that resonate uh, with our prospective audience, be that students, parents, what have you. Um, and we've more recently kind of leaned into um, the competition that has been uh, surrounding our campus um, these last few years. We have a lot of off-campus builds that um, I'm sure a lot of folks are kind of are in that same boat. Um, all those high rises just pop up overnight. Um, and, and, you know, they give us a little bit of run, run for our money because they have, you know, the, the shiny new amenities that we can't always readily offer that quickly. Um, so again, we, we've tied it back to assessment um, and really kind of played into that and really honed in on um, what we offer in comparison to what the shiny new high rises are offering. Um, so here's a couple examples. You know, we, we really promote that students who live on campus with us for at least one year um, graduate faster, they have higher GPAs, um, and they build those connections that, frankly, they're not just going to be able to find in many cases living off campus. So again, I think it's about using um, kind of what you know about what you do and what the outcomes are that you offer um, in regards to promoting your own value proposition. And here's an example of that. Um, again, advice here, don't be afraid to address whatever your elephant in the room is going to be. Uh, for us, it's cost. So we need to compare ourselves to those shiny new properties um, in terms of cost and really break it down um, and communicate our values versus the off-campus properties. Um, so think about, again, what Sean was saying, what are your values and your why? And this could be uh, your safety. This could be academic support. Really hone in on what makes you special um, and really help that resonate with your prospective students and families. Um, and going back to what I think Molly said in the chat, you play up the fact that living on campus is so convenient. Uh, we do that too. We, we even have that in our collateral that yes, students, you can literally roll out of bed and get to class because we know that is a big selling point when compared to, to dealing with some other factors like you know, figuring out how they're going to get to class. Do they have to drive a car? What's their their situation? Um, so really playing into your own value propositions can really go a long way. So don't be afraid to do that. And just to piggyback um, another example and, and a temple uh, I had mentioned before that uh, as an urban institution, safety and security is really paramount um, to our customer base and has really grown in significance over the last few years. And, and so that becomes something that really is important for us to communicate um, and, and doing it in a way that's very um, mindful and, and, and done in a way that shows the collaborative nature of, you know, how our campus works together and provides resources for students while they're here to be as safe as possible. So um, that is important for us, um, but we also like to brag about some of the added resources that we have in our department, um, having our own maintenance team and, and how passionate they are about, you know, cleaning the residence halls and just engaging with our students that many of them know our students by first name and, and they're very personable with them. So that really goes a long way. It's almost like it kind of has like a Disney feel where people you know, they, they get to know the, the maintenance staff and, and, and they're friends with them and, and things like that. So it really, you know, they become like brand ambassadors and we'll talk about that a little later. So, um, but it really helps us to communicate. Again, it gets into this idea of there are partners in helping us to communicate our why message, right? So those are important, just what I would add in, with regards to how we define our value proposition. And then just a little highlight from SIUE, and I'm going to give a shout out to my marketing specialist, Bridget, who's on this call and designed this lovely poster. Um, she, um, But what we have really focused on, too, is 
again, there, there are some things that are very similar, but for us have some very specific outcomes tied to our university goals and strategies related to academic outcomes. So we try to take it the step beyond not just academic support, but we know statistically those students on average for us, not only do they have higher GPAs, but we've really looked at um, their course completion and how many credit hours they're able to attempt. And then what does that mean for them in terms of retention and getting to the finish line? Um, if you've ever been to Edwardsville, our campus is a little um, landlocked. Like we are not surrounded by our community. You can't walk anywhere like you're driving if you're not living here. Um, and so proximity to resources and campus carries different weight for us um, than just kind of the general proximity. And then that community and belonging piece as well, since not everything is right here. Um, this is just an example of one of our marketing materials that highlights some of those things in a really um, concise way uh, for people to take that away as well, to see some of those takeaways and see that value proposition in a way that they don't necessarily realize that's what they're reading, but, but that's how we're using in terms of the marketing side as well. So I'm gonna pass it back. Actually, I'm gonna pass it to myself. So we're gonna keep talking and we're gonna hopefully continue to use the chat and open it up for people. If you would like to unmute, please feel free to share, but we wanna kind of talk a little bit about as you hear these things, especially because half the room didn't say marketing was in their job description. So what does that look like as you're hearing this? Who do you believe is responsible for these things on your campus? And that's not a trick question, but truly like, what does that look like in terms of who ultimately is responsible for this being carried out in your department? And then is that different maybe than who's ultimately responsible, but who is actually seeing that play out day to day? And then where are there potential barriers or challenges to that? So um, I love there's some people in the chat. Would love to have some people, if you're willing, to unmute and share a little bit um, and where we can talk about maybe some of those potential challenges before we get into the next half of our time. No. So I know some of the things that we talked about, time, energy, like simply having the capacity. A lot of our folks right now, like there's some head nods that that is a real thing right now. Identity can play into that. Like how do you carry into a space to be able to get people to buy into what you're saying? Um, and what does that mean? And we're going to talk about that specifically later when we talk about stakeholders as well. But I'm going to open it up one more time if anyone has anything they want to add. Okay, so as we keep going, uh, uh, yeah. Kristen had a nice comment um, in the chat where she mentioned that one of the things that they're trying to do is uh, create better buy-in from staff, uh, especially at recruitment events and gathering testimonials from current on-campus students, uh, but they're having some challenges. Uh, uh, to quote her, it's a slow transition. We can feel that, Kristen. But yes, I mean, that's a lot of this brand ambassador piece, the idea that we are all in those roles and all have some responsibility there sometimes can make it messy. Like sometimes it does make it a little unclear if there's not the plan of really how are we all maybe playing that out. So that's something we're going to talk a little bit. And then we hope that as we go through this, part of what you're thinking about is where is my opportunity? Like if I'm I'm in this space, I'm thinking about my role at my institution, where is my opportunity to either open a door, start a conversation and use some of these things to help um, maybe formalize something in your department if it's not already there or capitalize on what you're already doing really well. So um, one of the things is we kind of move into the second half is how do we operationalize this? So we, we've identified these values. We know the things that make us unique, but then how do we have the data to support that? And then how do we have the right people in the right places to tell our story? Um, one way that we do that is through strategic planning, is being, being intentional about what those look like and how that fits into our university and to our department. So Sean, you wanna share um, your example? Yeah, no, thank you, Mallory, for doing that. And I think it kind of it dovetails into the, your previous question about, you know, kind of thinking about those um, examples. Um, but for uh, Temple, we have a, 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 we call it Summer Summit every year, which is a program that is a divisional-wide program where we come together and 
uh, it provides us an opportunity, among other things, you know, for that kind of once a year get together during, you know, prior to the summer to kind of debrief on how the year went and things like that. But it also gives us an opportunity to, you know, set the agenda for the year and, and think about our strategic plan and, you know, do an assessment of, you know, where we're at with achieving our objectives and things like that. So it, it, it's definitely a great opportunity for us to just reevaluate, you know, are we doing the things that we say we're going to do? Um, be, you know, within the year, people kind of come in that are new to the organization. So it's always good for us to kind of refresh and re-educate people on and remind people of like, hey, this is what we say we're doing. Um, but it does give us an opportunity to, you know, ensure that we're communicating these messages. And you mentioned the idea of telling your story, right? Uh, these are great opportunities for us to do that and to just connect with people that they can share what they're doing. So by department, we typically are giving updates like, hey, this year, these are the things that our department has done that is connected to the things that we say. And I always find that those are great opportunities to educate our colleagues on what we're doing. But again, it goes back to, you know, this idea of, you know, defining what makes us special and, and the value that we give to students. So if you're not doing things like that, I think it's a great opportunity to kind of, number one, I think it speaks to that idea of strategic planning and documenting what you're doing. But as a marketing person, I think it also gives you a lot of, you know, opportunity to, to help, you know, tell those stories as well. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, we do something similar. I think if you're in a position to influence something at a formal division level, that makes a lot of sense. If it's something for us, that's an every few years exercise. But as a department, we're doing that annually. And so what does that look like to think about, um, okay, so the university strategic goals are X. And where does that tie to our department? And then where does that tie to our maybe annual, very more strategic and measurable goals for that year? And then are we continuing to tell that same story, um, particularly to senior leaders? So when we talk about a, the overarching thing of this is how are we communicating our value? How are we telling our story to folks outside of our space and within our space? And being able to make those connections that tie back to institutional goals and priorities is really important. And so thinking of that thinking that through the levels above your value proposition or how those things coordinate together, it shouldn't really be happening in separate silos. So if you feel like that is happening on your institution, how can you maybe pull that back together or have that conversation to recognize and identify like, hey, we say that institutionally, these are our priorities and our values. Does that align with what we're saying in our department? And then does that align with the story we're telling students? Um, we also want to recognize that part of what we're doing sometimes is not necessarily only talking about our department value proposition, or our department brand. That's a huge part of it. But depending on the role you're in, you may be telling your story for your program or your initiative. And then what does that mean to help people understand that? So value propositions is an idea that can trickle down into um, not just your department, but maybe a living learning community that you're a part of, or a special program that works with um, a special group of students that is impacting retention. Like, do you have the story? Do you have the couple things that tells us why that opportunity and that experience is unique? And then how is that language consistent throughout your department-wide goals and the institutional goals? So. That's an important thing that sometimes we can wrestle with a little bit. So you may have a really um, impactful program that you know ties to retention or some other institutional goal. And so it may be easier to get that story out there because you're able to make those connections in that tie. There might be other times where there's something that we know is really impactful to a small group of students, but maybe that very obvious connection is not right there. Or maybe we don't have the data to necessarily support its tie. But you know from those experiences what that looks like and the impact on those students. And so being able to then see where that can fit in a unique way is helpful. It may also be something where we have that conversation about like, is that where I'm spending a lot of time? Or is that the thing that I need to be trying to tell the story about? and know that it's really important and we need to keep doing it. And do I need to make sure my boss knows that I need to keep doing it? But do I need to take 
Should I be spending a lot of external energy on telling the story of that group? So sometimes it can mean some conversations and some thought about what that looks like, about what you're bringing to the table. I think also considering how our program outcomes support our department values is going to fit into that too. And as we talk about that value, we're going to, we're going to kind of slide right into that. So um, we've talked about data. We're going to keep talking about data. So um, if you wouldn't mind, go to the next one, James. There's a couple different ways we're going to do that. So through knowing our data, so what are the data and assessment tools that we have available to us? How can we communicate that in traditional ways? So Allie's going to spend some time talking about traditional marketing, some online marketing, like some of the time we need to tell our story in a way that's not just communicating it verbally to others. But then we're also going to kind of wrap up with how are you a brand ambassador on your campus for your department or for your program? And what does that mean to have those relationships strategically with other folks? Data is a really powerful storyteller. Like we know if many of you, I know there are certain folks on my campus that if I sit in a room and I give and I tell a story, that's nice. What's the data that supports that story is going to be the next question. So you have to be able to back up some of those things with sometimes it's very quantitative and sometimes it's qualitative. Sometimes it's, well, we did ask five students and this is the feedback that we got, or it's we surveyed hundreds of students and this is the feedback we got, or the GPA data over time is telling us that. Making sure we have that relevant data to support those value propositions. So if you're going out and you're saying, these four reasons are why students really really want to focus on the residential experience on my campus. What's the data that supports that? And being mindful that sometimes data gets old. Don't be the new person that came in and doesn't ask how old the data is. Or, hey, have we updated this in a few years? Or have we run new numbers on this? Make sure that if we're using data about, um, like every year, I'm like, hey, what's the new GPA data? And what's the new number of um, credit hours people have completed? Like, we have to be able to know that that's recent and true to our students um, if we're going to be using that. The other part of it is that we have also have national data. I has data. So if you can tell a bigger story about the residential experience and then think about how that ties onto your local campus is really important. So we now, a couple of years ago, we have some really great data about the value of on-campus housing. Like that exists and that's available to you. And so you can pull that but then, okay, maybe that's your starting point for, okay, this is really great. How can I try to get some of this information on my own campus? Um, we do a survey for students who choose to come back to housing and students who choose not to come back to housing. We do it internally. Um, it is not the most scientific. I will be very honest with you. But sometimes your limitations for assessment staff, who's available to do things, may mean that that's the case. But there's really valuable information that comes from that for us to then be able to dig deeper. So think about that. Have an assessment plan for your department that ties to the data you're collecting, that ties to things about your value proposition. If we're talking about student success, that's probably something that you need to be working with institutional research to make sure that you can tie those things to that on and off campus experience as it relates to retention or graduation. Things like your GPA data, you need to probably talk to folks outside of your area but there could be some things and stories about students telling you why living on campus made a difference in their experience that you can go out and collect. And so having that is really important. You wanna be able to connect those initiatives and those stories to larger priorities that are happening. I would love if folks, as we're kind of talking about this point, if we could use the chat again to talk about impactful data you're using on your campus. So if when we're talking about this, you're like, we have got this, we are doing it great. We have certain things that we always collect. We know we have it. It's really important to us. Please share that. I think sometimes data and assessment can seem overwhelming to get started in. And we would love for folks to be able to share what they're doing well on their own campus and, and other folks to see that as well. Um, one thing that we want to kind of tie into knowing is that the data that we have here comes through traditional, we can also then have to execute that data out. So we have it, how do we tell the story? That's what we all keep coming back to. How are we an ambassador for the story? How are we an ambassador for the data? And traditional marketing is a way we can do that and then how we equip others to share that. So I'm gonna pass it over to Allie and we're gonna talk about some traditional marketing efforts that we've done and other institutions have done as well. 
Yes. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, traditional marketing, I feel like we could have a whole webinar talking about what works, what doesn't for our institutions, uh, which I'll get into just a little bit. Uh, but just as a basic overview, um, traditional marketing consists of a lot of different components. Think of them, you know, tools in your toolbox. Um, so we've got print and that could be a myriad of different deliverables from, you know, flyers to posters to signage to handouts, to postcards, et cetera. Um, then you've also got digital, which is this whole other world, right? Um, includes your website, your online presence, your social, your digital signage, TV, radio, all of that kind of incorporates back into digital. Um, let's not forget email, uh, which is um, often, you know, Either hit or miss, depends on how you're doing it. Again, topics for other discussions, I think. Um, word of mouth is always going to play really well um, and hopefully benefit you and, and helps you know share your value propositions organically. Um, we've got signage. We've got a myriad of different promotional products um, from apparel to tote bags. Everyone loves stickers. Um, so those can all kind of come into play uh, with your traditional marketing as well as, you know, product placement, tapping into influencers that may be on your campus already. Um, that's all kind of, again, part of your toolkit. So different ways to, to reach students and your audiences through traditional marketing channels. Um, so by diverse, oh, if, okay, we can, we can stay here. Um, I was gonna just share, um, you know, think about how to reach a broader audience by maximizing your marketing impact through some of these traditional methods. Um, consider what makes sense for your target market. Is it stickers? I know for us it's stickers, um, but maybe for parents it's a physical handout or brochure. Um, so really something to consider when you're when you're making choices and, and kind of trying new things and seeing what works. And it can also mean, you know, customizing your messaging or your value propositions um, in your marketing materials to appeal to those different audiences um, or their interests. Let's go to the next slide. So I just wanted to share, um, I know as a marketer, we joke about it. You probably do too. Um, I just wanted to highlight a little bit that print is not dead for us at University of Arizona. And going back to what Mallory was speaking about, you know, we survey our students before they come to campus in August and we ask them at the end of the year the same kind of questions to get a pulse of, you know, maybe what they anticipated um, or what they actually experienced. So this is just a quick example of one of those questions. Um, asking how students heard about things going on in either their dorm or on campus in general. And I did put a, a big star over by uh, flyers and posters because I think the assumption is all, everything is digital. You know, students don't want to read an email or they don't want to see a, a poster in their bathroom or down the hallway. And for us, that is just frankly not the case. Um, that's what's resonating for our audience. So um, for us anyway, uh, flyers and posters are not going away and print isn't dead. Um, so I think knowing that year over year, you know, gives us those that information and those um, outcomes to kind of focus on moving forward. So just again, a quick example specific to us. Um, one of my favorite things to talk about um, with folks is our Akuai Marketing Awards. Um, this was established in 2016. So I think we're coming up on eight or nine, year eight or nine. Um, and the Marketing Awards has served as a platform for us to showcase well-designed and innovative marketing uh, that our partners across across the world actually are working on uh, within campus housing. Uh, our Marketing Awards are presented annually at the Kuwai Business Operations Conference. Um, we're getting ready to open up submissions for the coming year uh, in just a couple of months. So keep watching those emails. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about some uh, different examples that have come in the last couple of years. Um, these are some of our award winners. And as you can see, there's a myriad of, of those traditional marketing pieces um, that are, you know, being used. And it really just depends on what ranges 
works well for your audience um, from print to digital? Um, and what is helping you get that value proposition messaging across to your various channels or platforms um, when you think of your different audiences? So again, it's just some different examples. Um, stay tuned and please visit the AkuoI website uh, for more examples of marketing award winners and just you know get some different ideas. Again, maybe not everything is going to resonate for your, your target market. Um, but there are definitely some nuggets uh, just by you know, employing that range of, of tactics that are going to be available via traditional marketing. Thank you, Allie. Um, so as we wrap up, one of the things that really all this gets into our takeaway is that who is your partner? Like who, depending on where you are on your campus and where you fit in your org chart, who is somebody that partners in sharing your values? So that could be someone within your own department. Like if you are at a mid-level and you have a really impactful program or group of students that you work with that you know about or focus interest communities or living learning communities or um, academic initiatives, you should make sure your director knows how well that's going and what that looks like and the impact on students. It could be if you are at a senior level, they need to make sure that there are other directors in your corner and other people that are in different spaces on campus that you're not in. Very frequently talk about like, we can't be all the places all the time, but there are absolutely opportunities that other people will have to tell your story. And so how are we making sure that they're prepared to do that? Um, understanding your institution. So not just trying to read off the slide, but this is truly the biggest takeaway. Understanding your institution, people in leadership, and who is an influencer on your campus will help you navigate that. So it's not always by title. Like, I think everyone knows that at this point, like there are people in your campus that have influence and they are in the spaces that they need to be in to make sure that, and what they say, people tend to believe. And so it's important for us to think about who those people are. What's your institution's culture like? Are you in a space where I can absolutely send um, people at multiple levels within my organization to go represent themselves on a, on a campus-wide committee and they will be able to uh, be heard in that space? Are you maybe at an institution where culturally, if it's not the director of a department or a vice chancellor, people aren't really listening. So how do you navigate that, which can be challenging? And I would say on a side note, would be frustrating to have to manage. Um, Knowing those things is really important. I would also like to note that sometimes people feel icky about this. Um, it's not icky. It's not It's not bad to be strategic about making sure people know your story. And it's also important, and I'll say this, to be a good partner to others. Um, it starts to be icky if you're not being, if you're not doing that with integrity or you're not being a good partner in the way that you help to represent others in spaces where you have influence. But if you're being honest and there's mutual, there's often things that are very mutually beneficial on your campus, um, that's not bad. Being strategic is not bad. And so finding those spaces is important. Um, if folks want to use the chat again or want to, we're going to keep moving, but what are challenges in building those strategic relationships and how does identity and role influence that? Would love folks to share if they're willing. Um, but I think some of the things that we have identified as a group, and as we talked about this session is, um, you know, access can be a challenge. Being able to, people have a lot going on. Like, I don't know if you're like at our institution, we have a lot of openings. People don't have a lot of capacity. And sometimes more information or um, just simply being in the space is harder than maybe it used to be. I've been doing this a long time and it seems like there's, fewer hours in the day. I feel like everyone probably feels that, but that makes it harder sometimes to be able to be strategic with that, be thoughtful with that, and have people get the information that you need. So really be thoughtful about it then. So if you know you can't be everywhere, who are those strategic people? How are you a good campus partner to others? And the, the good data really does fall into that. If you're telling somebody your story, make sure that you're telling them something that aligns with data and assessment that you know is going to be accurate so that if they're in a space advocating for you, they're doing that with good information um, is really important. We could spend, I did a whole session on this. 
and in, in another world. So again, we could spend a lot of time talking about what it looks like to navigate this on your campus, but it is important to realize that you do have a role and you do have space um, no matter what position you're in. So I'm going to pass it back to Sean and we're going to wrap up and we will have a couple minutes, I think, if folks have questions or if you want to put something in the chat now, we would be happy to address that too as we get to the end. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, we know this is a lot of information in a short period of time. So, um, but hopefully if you, you had some interesting things um, that you, you learned or that you found that you were in agreement with um, as it relates to the topic of communicating the value of campus housing. Uh, we would leave you with this, that being a brand ambassador is so important and knowing your value within your organization is everyone's job. The best organizations and companies know this and they do this so well. Um, one organization I'm fond of using um, in the courses that I've taught is the Pixar organization. Um, and there's a great documentary on Disney Plus, uh, The Story of Pixar, which really dives into their company culture and their history. And, and, and it defines them as an extreme team and and really great uh, story if you're interested in um, just kind of diving in. I I, I kind of geek out on, on stuff like that because I love hearing uh, stories of companies that really uh, get this and they understand how to, you know, communicate their why and what makes them different. And, you know, Disney's such a great organization, but it wasn't always, you know, great. They they did struggle for a number of years and, and Pixar it's just a great story and how they kind of combined with one another. So um, so I think that might be uh, interesting for you to take a look at. Um, we discussed a variety of things today with regards to communicating your why, your vision, your unique selling proposition, your value proposition. Um, and again, as uh, Mallory had said, if there are questions in the chat that we can get to, we would certainly um, um, do that. Uh, I want to echo what Allie had mentioned about the marketing awards. Um, that is certainly a great opportunity for you to brag uh, and showcase the great work that you may do or that you know that your colleagues are doing at other schools. Um, we will have opportunities during uh, the summer, during Campus Home Live, um, for the continuation of this conversation. So we hope that um, you'll continue to reach out and you know, connect with us if you're interested. You know, we're always looking for people to help us with presenting. Um, we'll certainly come back to the Business Operations Conference is yet another opportunity in the fall um, where you'll be able to engage with us um, and, and participate in sessions and, and things like that um, to further um, learn about this topic. So, um, you know, again, we, we appreciate you joining us. And if there are uh, questions that we can answer, like we'll certainly do that. So let's see. How many attendees now? Let's see. I'm going to highlight what I said was it's everyone's job. Right. It is everyone's job. Says the person who started 16 years ago as a marketing person. But yes, it is everyone's job. And that's so true. I mean, you can even write up your elevator pitch and pass it out to staff just so they have that in the back of their head because they never, I mean, they could be on the spot. They could be riding in an elevator with a family. And I mean, this is just good information for them to have in the back of their brains. Yeah. And I think, you know, Ali brings up a great point in this last minute is with the idea being that we are all a brand ambassador, that really does fit into, okay, so if you were one of the people that said marketing is part of your job description, that's a really easy takeaway. Okay, well, you know, you're, you probably knew all of this stuff. So how are you equipping other people in your department to go out and do that? And if it's not in yours and your marketing person, or you don't have a marketing person, because lots of places don't, although I would advocate that they're wonderful, but not everybody can have that resource is, okay, so I don't know the answer to this question. I know what I think it is, but I don't know the answer to this question. So who is it that you can ask to take some ownership in getting that? And I would say maybe you will trigger that thought for the person who needs to be having that conversation as a department um, 
to do that. I'll also say sometimes this can feel like bottom of the list stuff, especially if maybe you don't have an occupancy issue. Like it's easy in some places, I think, to see like we have people banging on the door. They don't want to go anywhere else. We have a high demand, like, and it's important to be able to see the learning and the bigger ties institutionally too, and not really take for granted that, yeah, people want to live here, but then, okay, so maybe your thing isn't so much about occupancy, but maybe it's about how is my experience different because I'm living on campus. So there's always a value piece, even if it's not why you should live on campus. It's what is, the, what's the takeaway from that? What are you learning from that? As a result of being a residential student, what has that meant to your experience as ex student? Um, you can do all those things too. And I would just respond to Kristen's comment here about, you know, especially when people think that it's not part of their job, you know, I find that just providing information to people so they understand, you know, what the, what the message is and, you know, and just being transparent with people like, look, we understand that maybe you don't feel comfortable having this conversation, but as long as you know what we're communicating and that we're all on the same page with what we're communicating, that in itself is very important. So, and being yeah. nowhere direct people, I think is also critical as well. Yeah, I think spreading that buy-in uh, starts from within. So, I mean, yeah, to Sean's point, just preach it, preach it and hope that, you know, they will jump onto it. It uh, doesn't mean that they have to be up on stage presenting by any means, if that's out of their comfort zone or their wheelhouse, but at least they have that knowledge in their back pocket um, to be able to speak on that because we never know when those circumstances are going to arise where, you know, a family is taking a tour and they're like, you know, walking by a custodian and, and just happen to ask the question. So I think it, it really comes, you got to equip your staff. Again, we could do this for days and days and hours and hours. And that's usually what we do when we have our uh, committee meetings. So, um, but thank you uh, to Sean and Allie and Mallory for being a part of this today. Um, I always appreciate hearing your uh, professional insights and expertise on this and so many other subjects uh, around campus housing. And hopefully all of our attendees are seeing those benefits as well. Um, there was a link in the chat for a um, survey uh, to um, do an assessment of this presentation. And I would also encourage everyone to keep their eyes and ears peeled for future AKUOI uh, communications about um, additional resources and programs and materials coming out about um, this topic and all the other topics within the Future of the Profession project. Um, it's been a really amazing opportunity to hear from so many different volunteers that have helped shape what that program is, and now they're shaping the deliverables and the resources that are truly going to help um, move all of us into the future. So thank you very much. Um, Meredith, if there is anything I have forgotten to say, this is where you get to jump in really quick and save me. Um, you have covered everything, James. Thank you so much. Um, I will take that as a win for today. Um, um, again, so if uh, when this is all done, please uh, create, um, not create, complete the survey. And uh, and if other questions pop up, uh, please feel free to put them in the Akuai online community or um, any place like that, where again, we can continue to collect this sort of feedback and share examples. So with that, I will say thank you very much for your time and have a great rest of your day.